Hi, so welcome back to the Football Truth Group podcast. I'm your host, uh, Pierce McLaughlin. I'm joined by a special guest in uh, Ross Davis. Hello. Hello, how are you? Yeah, I'm very good. Yeah, so first of all, Ross, I just want to ask you, um, just give a little bit about yourself, your background, where you're from, and mm-hmm. then what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, so my um, name's Ross Davis, and I'm K-League English on um, Twitter and um, my other handles as well. And... Um, from uh, Northern Ireland, I've uh, been uh, living in, in Korea uh, on and off like, since like 2010, and then like covering the K League um, a bit later than that, and then working as an analyst uh, on the league since um, like 2018, uh, and then do a bit of writing myself and um, mainly on, on Twitter uh, covering the league as well. But um, I work for a couple of different companies covering um like uh, previews and reviews of games and stuff um as an analyst and um at the minute uh, I was kind of double jobbing for a while but I've uh, just quit my day job so um at the minute it's just looking after the the wee one who's off school uh but hopefully um in, in well in the new year now uh, kind of looking to do other stuff as well related to uh, covering the league and um, like um, on my sub stack and writing and, and covering the Asian Cup, which is coming up as well, uh, that kind of thing. Yeah, so that sounds really good, exciting. Um, so I think we'll start mm-hmm. off with um, obviously the, the most kind of talked about players that are playing in Europe with the South Koreans. So I think we'll start with mm-hmm. what, um, what you've got, Hwangi Chan, Son Hyun Min, Kim Min Jae, mm-hmm. Jang In. And mm. I think the probably the most breakout star this season has been probably Hwangi Chan in the Premier League with Wolves. Yeah. Um mm. so I just kinda of want to give your kinda of, uh, your opinion on that, just kinda of why that's probably happened and how and basically how far can he go? Hwangi Chan, um yeah, yeah. Well he's getting linked to like big well, you know, no offense to Wolves, but like bigger clubs you would you would say. Um I think in the in the media I don't know how um, truth that is, since he's just signed a new contract for Wolves, so um, I think he's he's doing very well in that system there. Uh, I think it's come about, uh, I think, down to like trust. You know, when he first came in, um, to Wolves, he wasn't playing much or sub appearances, but um, under Gary Neal, especially, he's he's been tr- trusted to start, and uh, he's just uh, the, the way he plays, and he's not even playing in. His natural position is playing kind of as a, a number nine and um you know running down the channels doing what he does best with his drag backs and cutbacks he's uh, doing very well and fits their system quite well with his pace and then um their other um um forwards are uh, also playing well so obviously that helps and um um I think just keep keep doing what he's doing um you know obviously hopefully that works out for Korea as well though his role is a bit different. Um, on the national team, and um, at, at Wolves when he when he gets back, uh, hopefully, um, late February or mid February, um, hopefully he'll be able to you know, just keep doing what he's doing because, um, he's been in terrific form, uh, this season, and it's um delightful to to see how well he's been doing. Yeah, because if I, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he started when he was in the K League. Was it Pohang Steelers? Uh yeah, it's just as a youth youth player, so he never um uh, played, but um yeah, and um they have obviously got quite a uh a famous um youth setup and um I think still follows the team he says. Um um but yeah, I don't think we'll be seeing him in, in the Kaylee, which is no. not a bad thing, uh given how good he's playing and uh but it's good to hear that he still um keeps in touch with the league and uh, still watches, uh, I think, occasionally as well. Yeah, that's, that's brilliant to hear. Um, so, so, so similarly, uh, Kim and Jay, he just uh, got mm. a, just won the KFA Player of the Year. Um, obviously, mm. out season, breakout year in terms of obviously mm. winning Napoli, winning the Scudetto mm. for the first time in 33 mm. years. And mm. now he's obviously at Bar Munich. Do you think he can do one better in terms of winning the league and potentially the Champions League this year? Uh, just certainly. Um, you know, he's him and Harry Kane they've got all the weapons I think the probably the thing that they were lacking um was that striker and uh I think he's fitting quite well um different 
pressure, I guess, than Napoli. They were more the underdogs, and um, diff- yeah, uh, they're not doing that amazing. Uh, but um, if you look at his stats and stuff, and some of the the passing percentages and stuff, he's he's fitting quite well, uh, and he's an, obviously an excellent um, centre back, and hopefully, um, well, well, one of the best in the league and uh, better, the best in the world, even. Um, and um, I think maybe with how you can't like took them took them a while to um get into Europe and trusted and it's kind of setting things the light as he did in Fenerbahce and then and that who was amazing and he's been amazing for, for a number of years. Um it was quite a joy to see like someone else win it other than Son of Min, who's obviously the obvious choice and fully deserves it every year, but it was great to see him kind of recognized. Um and getting that award and he he's obviously um one of the best players in in the world in that position. Yeah, because I think let's see if someone like Kim and Jay, I think he's got a bit of everything. He's he's strong in the air. He's got a big, tall, athletic frame. Mm. He's obviously very strong and pacey. And I think with obviously uh, Matthias Dillett, I think that will be quite a formidable partnership at the back. And obviously, he's obviously partner next to Kim Young Won. Of Ilsan uh, Hyundai, and obviously the, the, for the national team, and I think that again is another good partnership, and I think that's can only um, stem good success for both club and country. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, sorry, who who was the player there? Was it um, Kim, Kim and Kim Young Won, uh, Ilsan Hyundai, who won the? Oh okay, uh, yeah, and yeah, the Kim oh, yeah. Won player. Yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah brilliant, and he's yeah, left footed yeah. and. Yeah, more of a veteran now, but um, yeah, very good player. Right. Mm. Yeah, it's it's our brilliant player, and um, he's been the catalyst for Ulsan in terms of winning winning the league. Uh, if he hadn't come back to the league, uh, I don't think they would have won it. And when he plays, they're not as good. And um, yeah, he's yeah he's a hundred cap plus veteran for the national team as well. And, um, it's just a bit strange at the minute because um, you know, he's kind of lost his place uh recently, mm. um, for uh Jong Sung Hyun, uh, um, which means Kim Min Jae is playing on the on the left side, um, still equally good really, but um, it, it's not as balanced or it's a bit different, and they obviously have less experience as a partnership, so um, I think. You know, in the latter stages, if Korea get there, which they should, um, it might be tested, um, and you know, hopefully, uh, works out. But it, it would be a fear, I think. Um, if Clinton chooses to go that route, um, I think we'll maybe find out, um, with the last friendly, what he's thinking. But I imagine he keeps, uh, Jong Sung Hyun, like he has been playing, and then Kim Min Jae, alongside him. Yeah, so what do you think of obviously um the difference in Son Hyun Min's uh, displays this season compared to last season? Obviously changing position from the left to more central role, similar to obviously how Yi Chan does, but obviously different mm. from and country. Um and obviously he is getting a bit older now, so he's thirty one years old, so he's kinda of not get the lightning pace he once had. But mm. as you know with Son, he's got that Great finishing on either foot, so composed, and he can pick up mm-hmm. pockets of space. Uh, what do you mm-hmm. think of his uh, development this season? Uh, for Tottenham, um, yeah, well, he's he's be, step- yeah, and stuff great. Well, yeah, he stepped up, uh, really with Harry Kane and uh, his leadership qualities, which is something quite well known with the national team. He's been captain for quite a while now, and um, but uh, maybe, um. Yeah, it's interesting to see him do it in in the Premiership environment as as well, and he's um adapted to that and taken it up, uh, on board and in his um in his post match interviews as well speaks says the right things and I think when when they lose they they're not too damn beat and you know he's he's quick to um kind of get everyone going again so very impressive uh from that leadership point of view and. On the pitch, yeah, just doing what he always does for Tottenham. Um, e- even better, uh, maybe. Uh, 
you know, with Kane not being there, you know, different spaces are there um, tactically as well. Um, I think um, settled in well with the new manager, of course. And I would say it's similar with um, Korea. He's, he's, he's probably playing, um, yeah, I think he's playing more as that kind of same style that he would for Tottenham. Um, a bit more of a free role um, as part of the front two. Uh, whereas for Bento, he was more, uh, he had a bit of a free roll under Bento, but it was more still on the left side um, of like a 4 2 3 1. But um, Klings was now doing like a 4 4 2. Um, and he, yeah, he's able to drop deep with um, Cho Gusong and links up and Wang Yi Chan, um, you know, and then uh, Yi Kang In uh, as well. So they're quite flexible um, going forward and they're all playing fantastic mm. um, as well. And obviously um, they get on very well, um, I think, um, off the pitch and yeah, very exciting going forward. Um, you know, I've just been thinking in my head, like uh, if Korea come up against um, like a Japan or someone where they're not going to have the ball much, I, I wonder like... A Hwang Yi Chan and Son Heung Min front two. What what would that do? And I think that would be quite an interesting one because, um, the skill sets, I think would work quite well. And Hwang Yi Chan can maybe do more of that running behind if if Son, um, drops deep or, um, yeah, I think could could be interesting to see. But there's there's not really enough time, or there hasn't been enough time to practice it maybe or. Uh, might be a bit risky, but something something that maybe we we might see if Klingsman decides to take a bit more of a risk. Yeah, so obviously we've obviously got um I'm based in uh, used to be based in Scotland from Scotland. We've had a few South Korean players over the years. Probably the most notable ones mm-hmm. are Chadery and Ki Sun Young mm-hmm. back in the day, mm-hmm. two thousand ten. I recall. Um, mm-hmm. so nowadays we have obviously at Celtic, um, uh, Oh Go and uh, Yang Young. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. one which we haven't really seen much of yet, yeah. Made yeah. an appearance yet competitively. Mm. Um, mm. So, what do you think of of their progress? And obviously, both named in the Asian Cup squad, and mm. you think that's Scotland as a market for key league players to come as a stepping stone to like bigger leagues like the Premier League. Uh, yeah, I definitely think it is, and um, you know, even Key Sung Young's the, the example there, and he, he's um went on to Swansea and Newcastle and all, and um can can be done, and obviously, like traditionally, Celtic would sell on to the Premier League or other, other leagues as well. So a great great stepping stone, really, and good to see Celtic taking advantage of the the market and ha- having a go, um, bringing in these players and. Um, but, but I think um the Oh Hyung Gu one was um not not really a surprise. I, th- I thought that was a um good signing and uh, kind of filled in a lot of boxes that Celtic needed. But he, um he obviously hasn't um played that much and it doesn't get many starts and um scores um maybe not not as much as you you would like. But uh still still playing well and. Uh, developing and um obviously w- when he first came over he um maybe didn't have the language and he's working on that as well so it's it's a slow process and i think you have got to be patient and it's good to see that something are being patient he gets regular minutes as well uh, and then for the national team he's um in and around the squad which is great um and then for um the other two uh, yang and kwan I think that was a bit, bit more of a surprise. Um, especially the Yang one, he was being, he was quite badly out of form. Um, for Gang one, um, yeah, it's, it's it seems like a long time ago, but it was actually just uh, last season. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it, maybe he still needs that time adapting. He, I think he shows glimpses, um, but obviously, um, hasn't, um got too many starts as well so similarly um a bit of a concern but very young uh again language needs time and patience but it's good to see him get into the career squad as well and this is a kind of sign of he is developing um and then kwan is a bit of a um concern obviously i don't know 
Um, I don't know what's happening really with him. Um, I know he did play a couple of friendlies and maybe gave a ball away a couple of times, but you know, still adapting and getting used to it. So hopefully, um, oh, you know, I've I've seen him get him on bench a bit more. So hopefully, it's just a case of they're just being cautious with him and giving them time to settle. Yeah, I think that's still interesting. In terms of all three of them, I think they're all at different stages. Like, like you say, mm-hmm. all he's that like, mm-hmm. like, play obviously with the striker Kyogo Furuhashi is quite small, diminutive, all but mm-hmm. his movement, whereas O is physical, backs into defenders, mm-hmm. and he loves um, a toss with defenders mm-hmm. and get across, mm-hmm. very good in the air. Whereas mm-hmm. I think he obviously knows he's like second fiddle to Kyogo, mm-hmm. but he's like the second option. Whereas Yang, he's he's very much raw. Pace, trickery, mm. but sometimes mm. he lacks belief a little bit. I think obviously, mm. yeah. Love, um, Gang Wong, who were relegation threatened to them playing mm. in the Champions League group stages, mm. it can be a, a massive jump up. And then, similar to mm. Kwon, like, he played what was it, um, Busan E Park in the K League 2 to then, yeah, Celtic. And I think he played a couple mm. of friendlies, I think it was Bobao, um, in mm. big step up, even if it's a friendly. He gave he gave a goal away and like, he's not been seen mm. since in, like the, mm. the reserves and obviously made it to the bench recently. But I think for mm. him it's maybe a loan move. Uh, mm. for him really. Uh, so moving mm. on, I th- um, we'll talk about obviously the K League. So who, who who impressed you last mm. year out of um, the teams? Yeah, well, it's uh, got to be Guangzhou. Um, they've just released the kind of salary figures today and they're right down at the bottom so they're playing um on, on a budget really and um just uh yeah um impressed stylistically um quite unique you would say in in their style very modern uh, inspired by man city uh, as the manager uh e jong hyun would tell you um and uh yeah very impressive to do what they did and um, the qualify for the Asian Champions League is uh, amazing, uh, for them and um definitely, um more than they were expected to do just coming up um from the K two the previous season, um uh, well yeah two thousand the this first season back, uh, and then Pohang as well finishing second um was a great achievement selling their best player, um and then kind of restructuring the team and. Um, uh, playing the same way, but yeah, brought in some very good, um, players and um, yeah, deserve second. Um, it's just unfortunate that they can push the title winners, uh, Ulsan, uh, a bit more. Um, you know, they they had a very strange season where they started on fire, um, setting records in terms of uh wins, uh, wins in a row at the beginning of the season. Uh, and then the second half of the season, they were quite poor, um, but they got over the line. So it's hard to be impressed, but you just got to remember that they were so good at the start of the year. So I would say those three teams uh, were the most impressive. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think like, also, and like you say, they set records at the start. And I think at the last mm. second half of the season, it was like lots of losses and draws. And at the end, they just got mm. a couple wins just to see it over the line mm. because they yeah. could have easily... I think at one point they were twenty odd points ahead of the second place side. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Down to like five or six points, and they only won it mm. on like the last couple of games of the season. Let's like secure the title. And I think mm. Poland, like the, I don't think they've got a big budget. You know, like the, the biggest budget. No. Would be was it FC Seoul? Uh, biggest what? budget for what? Sorry. Uh, in the key league, is it is it FC, like, for, in terms um, of budget, it's, like, um jump. Uh, John Book, uh, oh, and then Osan, and then I think FC Seoul was third. Uh, Pohang were down in ninth, I think, which yeah. is, yeah, big drop off. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like a massive drop off. Like considering, like mm. those that you touched on there, they sold their best player, and they somehow yeah. managed to just push Osan mm. all the way. And then obviously Guangzhou. Yeah. You know, I remember watching them in the K League Two uh, last uh, the previous, mm. and I wasn't, mm. I wasn't really impressed. I thought they were mm. pretty. Who are a very organized, structured, but they weren't great. Mm. Um, mm. and I think they've been a, a bit of fresh air. I think they've been a bit more mm. expansive. Some young players, I mm. think Um G Sung is a good player, and obviously yeah, fantastic. 
yeah, yeah. John Ho, Ho Yan as well in, in the centre midfield. And yeah, he he's in Min's got into the Korean team because he's played that well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, very good. Oh, and um, yeah. See the Sani, I think he was been pretty good for Al- Albania as well. Mm. Yeah, but, well, he's had a fantastic year. Um he he's unfortunately he won't be coming back, but he yeah, he deserves he deserves his move. Um but ho- hopefully they get a bit of a bit of money for him. Yeah. Um as well. And uh yeah, team Timo uh let, let's start as well. He's he oh. was he was very good and obviously come comes with a big reputation, but um yeah, delivering on the pitch and yeah, just uh, yeah, everything fit quite well. Uh, but um be hard to um yeah, repeat that. So I'd be interested to see what they what they do, um, in the win- window. Yeah, so I think like obviously, getting a third place finish. I think is the big teams always it's repetition, means mm. means maintaining mm. that kind of good yeah. form. I think for next season, if they get top six, I think that'd be a, an amazing achievement because obviously they'll have yeah. the Asian Champions League as well. Mm. Mm. The manager is very ambitious and. You know, he talks about winning the league, which I, I really like. Um, like he, he reaches for, for the the heavy heights, and um, it, wherever they could do that, you know, it's it's hard to imagine. But um, if they did, it would be um, you know, not not quite Leicester winning it, but um, it'd be quite very impressive. Mm. Yeah. So, so you talk, league, you talk, really, how you talk with the manager, um. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lee, Lee Jung Ho. Um, so I heard that he's been learning like Japanese and English, and mm-hmm. he talks about yeah. like, wanting to kind of follow a similar path to obviously Tottenham boss now, Ange Postacoglu. Mm-hmm. But he went to from Australia to Japan, yeah, then to Scotland, then to the Premier League. Mm-hmm. You think that is a realistic possibility for him to follow? Maybe go to Japan, then to Scotland, like a less league in Europe, then potentially the Premier League. Um. Yeah, it's, it's a big, big jump. Um. Um. I think. Um. He's he's probably already outgrown um Guangzhou. Um. I'm sure he's not been sure of offers as well from other clubs. I'm sure. Um. FC Seoul were looking at him as well, but end up going with King Gidong, which is a, a equally good appointment, really. Um. Yeah. Uh, I think he would have to go elsewhere um in Asia and probably imagine J League would be a, a stepping stone I guess. Um you know, I think he's learning but there's is uh is a difference between learning it and then obviously being able to use it on, on the pitch. So it's a big um or the training pitch or whatever um to get his ideas across. But his style, you know, matches the way that a lot of teams want to play and um I'm sure if he's able to conquer that, um, you know, it could could be possible to, to end up going um abroad. I mean maybe they at MLS or somewhere, I think even if he went to the J League unless he totally um rips it up, you would imagine he would they would need another English speaking maybe country where he's able to do it again. But it's a long road, but you never know. Hopefully it'll be amazing to see. Mm. And obviously you mentioned obviously the yeah, K League one young player here, um Jung Ho Young, who's obviously mm. been with a move to Celtic in the, the Scottish Premiership. Mm. Um mm. so do you think he will stay at Guangzhou next season or do you think he'll move to Celtic or another club in Europe? Um I think he's been linked to Copenhagen. Um they've had some interest in them. Um yeah, I, I can't see the Celtic move. Um coming through I don't I don't know I think um maybe it's not the player that Celtic needs um uh, he's like a number eight um kind of player so um not not sure whether he'll move this window or maybe wait until the summer I, I think would be maybe more realistic um he's also been linked to like Ulsan earlier in the in the uh in in December and uh, I think that that kind of move would would be good to see, and uh, he's another one who's maybe um outgrown Guangzhou, but um just in terms of the size of the club, but he's still obviously under a very good manager to be to be learning from, 
and uh, Lee Jung Ho has said that he's he's not ready to make that move. So it's a bit of a um yeah a bit of mind games going on. I think um so I don't think it'll be the worst thing in the world if he were to stay the next um kind of six months and then seek uh, maybe a move to Europe in um in the summer. Yeah, because exciting talent. Ah, he's a very exciting talent. Um, uh, I'd love to see him in the Asian Cup squad, to be honest. Mm. Just to freshen things up a bit, but no. Yeah, because I, th- oh, I think a lot of the players in that position he plays are a bit older now, or they play in probably less mm. ones. So it'd be a nice chance just yeah. to freshen up a little bit. Yeah, mm. yeah learn, learn from him. I think that's, you know, I don't want to be too critical on the eve of the Asian Cup, but yeah. I think there's a lack of um forward thinking planning ahead and successors which i think would in the end help the national team uh, even even in the short term uh, so yeah get get i would get him in to the squad and get him learning off the likes of uh, ej song and stuff but oh well so obviously next season we'll see um Kim Chon Sangmu who have just been promoted mm-hmm. to the key league one uh can you tell us a little bit about them cuz i know they're kind of like a military mm-hmm. Team, yeah. mm-hmm. players when they serve mm-hmm. their military service go on loan, but uh, that's mm-hmm. that's all I know. Mm-hmm. Can you tell mm-hmm. them more about them? Yeah, yeah, they've been in uh, Gimchon for maybe I think three years now. Uh, one, one, I think one year in the K one, and then one in the uh, got really well. Uh, they had to go down uh, because they changed the city. Uh, they used to be in Guangzhou um, quite a while ago. Uh, Edong Guk, uh, the John Book legend, was oh, yeah. playing for them then, and then they went to Sang, um, uh, Sangju, and then uh, they've went to Game Chun Zone. Maybe it's fourth year coming in now. Um, they have been a bit of a yo yo team, I guess, uh, uh, under uh, a different manager this time, and yeah, they've got the um, all the best players, I suppose, who, who need to do their um, military service. Uh, it's quite an uh, amalgamation of a, of a squad. It's, um d- doesn't always work well or players uh, kind of finish their loan halfway through the season and sometimes that's the best players and uh, the ones coming in are not as good, which happened um, in the 2022 season, really, and they ended up getting relegated and just kind of falling falling off um, um, in the latter half of the season. Um and yeah, this this squad that they've got um is quite quite good um and they've got yeah good um um good basis at the back and uh, Kim Kim Jae Woo is a good player he sang Min uh, good in one one do Jay of uh, Ulsan um so quite a good spine um maybe lacking um a striker um but they've got um. Uh, the young uh, uh, young Jun, uh, who was in the U twenty uh, World Cup, did very well. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see. Good to see them back in the top division. I think it's good when these players um have to do their military service that they're able to, you know, play in in the top top league. And um, it's, yeah, it's quite always a interesting setup, but can always be a bit random um at times as well. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see because obviously the the last kind of big name player that I heard obviously when international duty, um, you know the military service was obviously Cho Go Sung you mentioned, um, mm. he but he was there and then he went back to Jumbo, yeah. won the mm-hmm. gold boot, then the World Cup mm. map, and then he just exploded. Yeah, and that that's yeah. like, that's the kind of exposure that you could probably have if you go to like Kim Chun or and you get mm. those uh, experience as well. Yeah, a lot of players that have. Improved and Oh Oh Hang Yu was another one who went early and um you kind of um you kind of get stronger because you you're not really doing anything other than uh, um training and uh watching football and uh playing football I mean and and uh, eating oh. um stuff like so a lot of players come back like Cho Gusong came back um he seemed to come back taller and. Definitely more physical and yeah, oh. definitely helps um develop um the the players um a bit and um yeah it's yeah it's quite quite a good setup uh really to uh, be able to do your military service and play football. Yeah, 
So I think now we'll move on to the the, the big one is the Asian Cup. So the AFC Asian Cup um in Qatar 2023 will take place from Friday the 12th of January until Saturday the 10th of February. South Korea are in Group E alongside Bahrain, Jordan and Malaysia. Um, mm -hmm. How do you see this group panning out and would failing to progress from this group be um catastrophic? Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they would have to uh, walk back to Korea, not not just uh, Klingsman, but uh, even the players would, would uh, yeah, it, it couldn't happen. You can't imagine that happening. Um, it, it's not going to happen, uh, but um, that does create a bit of pressure uh, on, on the players. They, they've got the group stage, but the group stage is um, just a... Um, something you have to do to to get into the final uh the next rounds and and stuff and it's just something you have to navigate and unfortunately as well you have to kind of navigate it by winning each game if, if they were the drop points they would be uh quite heavily criticized um as well and um uh, don't don't need that kind of pressure um it, these are not easy games uh the way any game is but um yeah they have to win and kind of win comfortably as well to appease um the either even the fans uh, are quite demanding in that that respect i think but especially the media are very critical and uh, i think they're sharpening their knives for um claimsmen um as well so hopefully they get the three wins progress um to the next round where um i think it looks like they might play Iraq, which is interesting since they've got the friendly first against Iraq. Um, so uh, kind of a double header really. Um, maybe if all things work out. Uh, and then when you get into like the quarters and semis, uh, it gets very tough. And you know, uh, I think we're all dreaming of a maybe a Korea Japan um final or semi final or something. And uh, be a lot of pressure on on that game. Will be very exciting to watch and. Quite interesting to see what what happens, but uh, far far away, far off from that. So first, you got to navigate the early stages and get into the knockouts, and then um, you know, come up against the the top teams. But exciting, um, looking forward to it. Uh, they've got great weapons uh, going forward. They've got players in form that I uh, don't, I doubt they've ever had these many players playing at this level. Um. In the game, uh, if you think Kim and Jay and Yi e e Kang in even as well as the Premiership boys, and they're they're all in great form, and uh, no no excuses really. Uh, I think they've got a fully fit team. Uh, no excuses not to be uh, in contention, and hopefully win. Yes. So you think like the final is that a bare minimum? Um. Yeah. Well. Uh, it depends. Um, Who, who's the I other? Think, think, is, it, is it Japan, Australia? Uh, Japan, I think. Um, Japan, I think are the best team there, and uh, the the way they're in very good form. Yeah, um, Iran, um, Saudi Arabia. Although I don't think they've been that uh, impressive under um Mancini, and obviously Korea beat them in the friendly in Newcastle. Um, so I think Korea very capable of beating them all um just the main question mark will be uh what happens when they play japan because they won't be able to play the way they would against any other team i think they've got to adapt and um yeah they've got to maybe get get lucky or just rely on um one of those great talents going forward and kim and jay hopefully um at the back uh keeping it tight because then um, yeah be interesting so Jurgen Klinsmann got off to a rocky start in, um, in charge mm -hmm. of South Korea, obviously failing to win any of the first five matches. And since he's been on um, a five-match winning streak, scoring 19 goals and conceding zero, have you been impressed by his turnaround? And do you think the media scrutiny in the beginning was a bit over the top? Um, yeah, you got to be impressed um by the turnaround and the last um yeah five games has been very impressive not conceding of course um playing quite well um that away game in china was like a tricky tricky test and uh they absolutely dominated that game so they won by more um 
and, and yeah, they have our home friendlies and even the ones uh, away were quite good as well. And maybe except the, the Wales game, which I think was just a, a dull drab affair, but beating Saudi Arabia as well, one of your rivals for the Asian Cup, you know, kind of uh, was his first win and turned things around. And, um, you know, you got to say that they've been very good since then. So you've got to be impressed. Um, you know, they've, he's changed the system to what, uh, from what Bento was playing, they, they don't play the same way as well. They're less of a possession heavy team and more free flowing, I would say, in the final four, uh, in the final four, which sounds kind of like what he wants. Um, and in, in the start, you know, there was a lot of criticism in the media, um, about lots of things, including like playing style. No, no one really knew what Klingsman ball, if you want to call it that, was or. Um, you know, he had to answer these kind of questions in in the press conferences, and then he stopped doing the press conferences, which riled up a few people, and they were out to get him really. And he wasn't spending that much time in the country as well, which is a um an easy stick to beat him with, really. Um, so I think it was a bit over the top, but at the same time, he hadn't. Um, he yeah, he broke the record for the first screen new manager. To, uh, to go, um, yeah, was it five games without a win to start? So, you know, there was just cause in, in criticizing them. Uh, I think the method of the defeats and uh, the, you know, especially conceding late against El Salvador at home, um, doesn't look good in any shape or form. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of both, um, I would say, but he's, he's turned it away, it turned it around, and, um, you've got to back him at the minute, but. Um, I think he's like one bad result or even a mediocre result away from uh, being heavily criticised again. Mm. Um, so we'll see. You know, he's he's talking the big game. He's talking about winning the thing, which is what what you should be talking about. And you know, I do like that myself. And um, it the only um, the only downside to that is you've got to then go out and do it. So uh, a lot of pressure uh, under. Uh, at the minute, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but it could be, um, if it goes really badly, yeah, it could be, um, you know, maybe even the end of his tenure. Um, I wouldn't be too surprised. Yes. So if you think if he wins the the Asian Cup and then obviously going to mm. the World Cup, um, if he qualifies obviously for the World Cup, which he should do, mm. um, how far do you think you can take South Korea in the World Cup? Yeah. Uh, and he's adopted homeland, America. Um, hmm. mm. um, you know, Korea always um aims to gather the group, which um rightly or wrongly is um you know expected. Um, and then it just depends on the the draw. Really, last time they got Brazil, and but probably um didn't really give it a good enough go um either, but. Uh, you can't really argue that they should be beating Brazil. So, you know, um, uh, you know, you you aim you aim for that second round game, and uh, I'm not sure how the next World Cup will work with ha- how many rounds there'll be, or yeah, last of sixteen, um, or whatever. But, but yeah, definitely getting out of the group is uh, a must. And you know, if if the players are in as good as a form as they are now, you you would hope maybe a quarter final would. Uh, be possible, or you never know. Okay. Uh, so if so, if obviously it doesn't go well, and like you say, he has mm-hmm. one bad result after another, he fails to qualify for the group, he gets sacked from his position. Who do you think would be the next South Korea manager? Hmm. Uh. Oh, well. Yeah. yeah. Good. manager would, or would it be someone that's Korean? Um. It doesn't seem to be much clamor for for a Korean manager, um, at the minute, um, which is you know rightly or wrongly, um, so you would imagine that they would stick with uh maybe a European, uh, base manager, and they might go with maybe one of the people they were um looking at. So um, uh, what was this? Is it the former Getafe manager? Is it Moreno was heavily linked, and I think they spoke to him. Um, about the position, so you, you might imagine they they would go down that route. Um, you know, it might be too soon uh, for the likes of 
uh, Kim Gi Dong, uh, who I think is definitely working towards that. Uh, and if he does something special with Fessy Soul, then you, you would say he deserves it. Um, Chad Dury would be a risky pick, mm. but um, I think people would be behind it and would, would be interested in it. Um, maybe giving them give them a go. Um, but I'm I'm not sure if they they would you know take that risk. Um, really, and then we we took, spoke about the Guangzhou manager as well. It might again be too early for him. Yeah. Well, um, thanks so much, Ross, uh, for coming on the, today's special um Korean episode where we talked about obviously all things mm-hmm. Chile and South Korea. Um, make sure to check out today's episode on the Football Trigger website as well as the Football Trigger YouTube channel. Um, it's also available to stream on all um podcasting platforms: Spotify, Apple Podcast, uh, Samsung Podcast. Um, you name it, it's there. Um, I've been your host, Pierce McLaughlin. Uh, thank you, Ross, for coming on again. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll have more special content like this in the future. And um, twenty twenty four, a big year for football. Chugu, thanks for listening. Until next time, see you later. Bye bye. Bye.